Hi, welcome to the Rock and Roll Painter Show. My name is J.D. Wayne, and I am the Rock and Roll Painter. A few years ago, when I got started in the world of art instruction, I did some demonstrations around town where I painted some music. And I soon discovered I could paint an entire painting in the framework of one song. So I put on the top hat, put on the sunglasses, and the Rock and Roll Painter was born. But in this environment here, there's some copyright issues regarding music, so we're just going to show you how you can do a painting today. Hi, welcome back. Uh, tonight we're going to try to do this picture of a nebula. A nebula is a cloud of dust particles in the sky that kind of uh, are visible at night. Now you never want to try to copy a picture, but this will give me the essence of what I'm trying to do. I want to try to put this picture into a beach scene. So once again, it's a nebula, but this painting is going to be called Sweet Dreams. Okay, set that over here. So to do this, uh, we have a 16 by 20 canvas that I have a thin layer of black gesso, which is an acrylic based painting, allow that to dry because you can put oils over acrylic. And then I have a, uh, a clear glazing medium over top of that to make the canvas slick and so the paints will move around. Okay, once again, we have a few colors here. We're gonna have the colors roll across the bottom of the screen, but I'm gonna start with some phalo blue. Some phalo blue, I wanna load that brush up, get lots of color, some phalo blue. And I'm just going to put some of this color. This is a transparent color, so it's going to be hard to see on the screen. Once, once we add some white to it to really light it up, you'll be able to see it. So we're going to get some of that phthalo blue. There, it kind of shows up on this camera a little bit. But we'll get some of that phthalo blue all the way on this side of the canvas. Get some of that phthalo blue. Scrub it into the tooth of the canvas. Move it around. Then I'm going to wipe that brush out just a little bit. Got my fingers all in white paint. You gotta be careful when you're painting. You get paint all over yourself. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that blue out of there. And I'm gonna take a baby wipe and clean my thumb up so I don't get any white paint all over everything. And I'm gonna come back and this time I'm gonna go into the phalo green. Go into the phalo green. This is a this is a dark, dark color, and you gotta be careful. This color will follow you home if you get it on you. So we'll get some phalo green. We come up, we're going to put that on this side of the canvas. I'm going to scrub that into the canvas. Like I say, once again, it's a transparent color, which means you won't see it much with a black background. But once we start adding some white to it, that color will just jump off the canvas. It will jump off the canvas. So we'll get some of that phthalo green all the way up to the phthalo blue. All the way up to the phthalo blue. Okay, so we have phthalo green and phthalo blue under that canvas now. Now we're going to light it up and start turning it into a turn it into a nebula. Once again, you always got to keep your hands clean. Worst thing about paint, you get paint on your brushes, paint on your clothes, paint on your hat. It can just mess your day up. So I'm going to take a take a large two inch brush. I'm going to go into a little bit of this titanium white. Now you'll see these colors come to life now. Get a little bit of that white under that brush. I'm going to start on this phthalo blue side. I'm just going to bring that color to life. Just little X's. This is where that nebula is going to be. Little X's. Just work it all the way out. And you see now that color come to life. See that color come to life. That sky has come to life now. But it'll get darker out here in the edge. So less pressure, less pressure, less paint. Less pressure, less paint. Now I'm going to wipe out some of that excess color again. You get a paper towel. you got to keep plenty of paper towels and things with available. Go back into a little bit more of that white, a little bit more of that white, a little bit more of that white, and let's light that green up this time. Let's light that phalo green up. Once again, just little X's, little X's. Work that into the canvas, start lighting that green up. Once again, as we come out, it'll get darker and darker because we're having less paint, less pressure, less paint and less pressure. Take it all the way out to the edge, all the way out to the edge. Light that green up, light it up down there in the middle. Get that all lit up. Now I'm going to wipe this brush clean, wipe it a little bit clean, standing right in front of the painting. Wipe it a little bit clean. I just want to take out some of those brush strokes. I just want to take out some of those brush strokes. 
Just lightly, lightly go back and forth, take out some of those brush strokes, some long strokes, take out those brush strokes. It is an oil painting, so you will see some brush strokes. But you want to take out as much as you can, because this is a nighttime sky. Got a big bristle in there. Just lightly, lightly, lightly take out some of those brush strokes. Work that out in the middle. Starting to see that night sky coming alive. Now is when we're going to make that nebula. Once again, a nebula is a it's a cluster, a cloud of like dust particles and gases way out into space that are visible at night. The most famous one, I guess, is the Milky Way. You can see that a lot of times. But I saw a friend do this, Nick, this technique, so I'm going to borrow that from him. I'm going to load up some white paint on my fan brush. Load up some white paint on my fan brush on both sides. And this is the fun part of this painting. We're going to create that nebula. I'm going to hold that brush in my hands like so and just let her spin. Let her spin. Let her work its way out. Let it work its way up. Little things working its way out. Come down here. Let that nebula come to life. Get some into the blue side. Let that nebula come to life. And come all the way down to there. Now I'm going to take a, uh, a clean brush. I'm going to take a small one here. It's clean. I'm just going to work out some of, the, uh, some of the hard edges. Work out some of the hard edges and set that nebula into the sky. You want to keep it lit up. You want to keep it lit up, but work out some of those edges. Work out some of those hard edges and some of those bright spots. Just lightly work those out. Work out some of those bright spots all the way up. All the way up. And just softly kind of soften out the edges. Soften out those edges. And then take out some more of the brush strokes. So that's starting to look like a nebula. It's starting to look like one to me. It's a simple, simple, effective technique. Which is a few simple colors to get you a nebula. Now, in our last show, we did some snow with some white paint. We're going to do that same technique this time, but we're going to call it stars. So once again, I get a clean fan brush. Get a clean fan brush, a little bit of the thinner, a little bit of my titanium white, a little bit of my liquid white. Get like a milky kind of consistency like we have right there already. You kind of get the feel of what you need. It's kind of a milky, creamy kind of consistency. Load that brush up and we'll create some stars up here. So I hope this shows up on the camera. I just pull back and flip. These are nighttime stars into that nebula. Setting that nebula right deep into the sky. Come all the way down, it'll be my shoreline down here. Keep flipping. They seem to be brighter right along the nebula, so I'm gonna get a lot of stars right along that nebula. Turn my brush around. Look at the stars, lighting that sky up. I think that's a really, really effective, cool, cool trick. So now we're gonna, we're gonna create a beach. This is a nebula, a nighttime beach. When I first did this painting, I posted it, I called it Dreams and put it online. And the first person that saw it said sweet. And suddenly they're like, hey, that's Sweet Dreams. That's the name of that painting. So that's where the name of this came from. Okay. Now we're going to put some beach down in here. We're going to have a big palm tree and stuff in here. But let's get a small brush. Get a small brush. We're going to go with a little bit of, uh, little bit of dark sienna. A little bit of dark sienna. Oh, we forgot a color. We forgot a color. Stop. Oh, mercy. Get things going at times, and uh, I know it's in here. I just saw there it is. Well, my hat didn't hit my painting there. Okay, back where we were. Okay, now we're gonna put some water in this painting. I got a little bit of turquoise here. I'm gonna mix with a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of phthalo blue. A little bit of titanium white. Gonna get an aqua bluish green kind of color. Need some more white in there. Get some more white. Kind of come up with a tropical, a tropical water kind of color. Tropical water kind of color. So we're gonna go back to back to a small brush. We're gonna put some water in this painting. Put some water down here. You'll see, we'll do some more to turn this into really where it looks like water. We just want to get some of that base color down there. 
down to the bottom of that nebula, take it all the way across. And one thing, water's always straight, so you want to stop and look and make sure your, your water's straight. But we're going to be looking down the beach a little bit so the water line won't be straight, but the back and the horizon will be straight. And I found out sometimes it works nice to have the fan brush to really give you that straight line back there. So I'm going to get that fan, come all the way across there to give me that straight line. Give me some of that beach color. There, that's the water. Now we're going to go back where we started with some dark sienna. Dark sienna, put a little beach in here. Put a little sand up in here. A little bit more of that dark sienna. Get some of that sand kind of color. And a little dark Van Dyke brown all the way in the back. Be a little bit darker. A little bit darker. A little bit darker. Now I need a clean brush. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this brush up a little bit. Like I said, I got that odorless thinner. So we clean that brush up. I'm going to go with just a little bit of white. Just a little bit of white, if you can see that little bit of white. Where these two colors come together, that water and that beach, I'm just going to pull those two colors together. Pull, lightly pull those two colors together, kind of give a wet sand, wet sand kind of feel. Like so. That was simple enough. Go back to a fan brush. Well, before we go to a fan brush, we'll go to a small fan here. <clears throat> to give a little light to that water, if I get a little bit of my phalo blue color, a little bit of my phalo blue, just kind of put some the illusion of some waves here. With the light behind it, where the water's raising up, you would see it it'd be a little darker. These are not big crashing waves, but you're going to see a little bit, little bit of movement in the water. A little bit of movement. Get that all the way back there. Now we're going to take a fan brush and a little bit of white. A little bit of white. We're going to get a little bit of water action going back there once again. Just a little bit of white. Just a little bit of white will give a little bit of a feel of some moving water. We'll get some more back over here. Just, like I said, we're just trying to get the feel, a little bit of moving water, a little bit of moving water. But that white, that blue will eat that white right up if you're not careful. So some of those spots I did kind of disappeared already. I'm actually going to take a little bit on a knife. Take a little bit on a knife, painting knife. Get a little bit of that white. Pull this out here. Get a little bit of this white. I'm going to get a small roll, small roll of this white paint, if you can see that. Right where we have a little bit of a, the illusion of a wave, give a little bit of a white cap going with that. Get a little bit more of that white paint. Get a little bit more of a white cap going with that. Get a little bit back here, have a little bit of moving water. And right under that nebula, I think you'd have the biggest part of where that's going to be glowing. So I'm just going to give a little bit of shimmer. A little bit of shimmer right under there where that neb is really lighting that water up. Now where that water's hitting the, uh, where that water's hitting the beach, we're gonna have the illusion of a little break here in the water. A little bit of foam on the edge of that water. So that knife really does a nice job for that. You just bend that knife, bend that knife, puts that foam right on there. Then you take a clean fan brush, or you take any fan brush, kind of pull a little bit of that and pull a little bit of that water back to the ocean. Pull a little bit of that water back. It looks like I got enough room to put another little, another little roll in there, a little wave. I'll go back to my small knife, get a little bit more of that white paint. Put another little breaker there that's coming back to the sea, working its way back. And that really starts to look like water. Really starts to look like water. See me throwing, uh, throwing knives everywhere. All right, I want to pull a little bit of that back too. Or the one I just put in, pull a little bit of that back. Pull a little bit of that back. And how quickly we got nebula in the sky, we got water, we got beach. Now these kind of, uh, these kind of tropical scenes, what I always like to see is that big palm tree. It kind of grows out over the water. It grows out over the water. So we're going to get 
a fan brush. We're going to get some Van Dyke Brown. Going to get some Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of dark sienna, a nice dark color. And you got to think a rule of thirds. You don't want this palm tree to be right in the center here. It's going to be off on the side a little bit. But we're going to start that palm tree there. Have him come down right, right out of the painting. Right out of the painting. Now if I take a knife, I got to clean when I see I was dropping them all into the, into the paint. If I get a little bit of my dark sienna, a little bit of white, kind of come up with a light kind of color. I'm going to put a little bit, of, little bit of highlight on the side of this tree. Let's start down here. I'm just going to pull in, let that break a little bit. Pull in, let it break a little. Hope I'm not in the way of the camera. Let pull in, let that break a little bit. Get some more light. Need to get a little dark there. Get some more white. Get some more of that lighter color. Kind of pull in, kind of give a shape, a little bit of a round tree there. Now we wipe that off. I just come with straight white this time. Just get a little bit of white. Just a little bit of white. I know it's hard to see that palette from down there. We just give a little bit, a little bit of light kind of popping through there. A couple little bright spots. Now what would really make that tree brown if I go back to that watercolor, kind of an aqua kind of color, and put that on the other side of the tree. That'll give me like a little bit of reflective light. A little bit of reflective light. That really make that tree stand out from its guy. A little bit of reflective light. Just a little trick like that really makes that tree really stand out. Really stand out on the flat surface of the canvas. Now we need to make some big fronds. I got fronds in low places. We'll put some big fronds in there. But once again, that's I'm fanatic about keeping my hands clean. Gotta keep your hands clean. Okay, we're gonna go into uh, with a fan brush. We're gonna go into some sap green. Sap green, maybe some phthalo blue. We want a dark bluish green kind of color at night. Maybe just a touch of thinner so this will flow off here real, real easy. Make it a little bit thinner. Let's make some fronds. It's always nice to make fronds. Now the top of this, to make it look thick and full and kind of 3D, we're gonna start off with a couple little fronds going the other way. So these are fronds on the other side of the tree. If I just kind of just say where I want it to be and pull out on the fan, I kind of create a frond. Make another little frond that's all the way on the other side. So I kind of say where that frond is, just kind of pull out a little bit. You see, those are being a little lighter because they're picking up some of that white, but that's good. That just automatically gives a little bit of highlight. So we'll come back to that dark color. Now we're going to make some bigger fronds. It's going to cover up these a little bit, but that'll help give some depth to it. So I'm of a big old frond coming out here. I just pull out. Just pull out on that color, kind of create those leaves on that frond. You might see a little bit on the other side. A little bit of those fronds. Get some more of that dark color. Let's make a frond. Let's make one right over here. Have them come up and over. Might lose that one behind it, but we know it's there. Make some fronds. Now we're going to do some nice big fronds a little closer. We're going to have one here that kind of grows out this way, kind of grows down. Once again, just pull out on that. Pull out on the other side. Kind of create those fronds. Got to create one coming this way. Pull out on that. See how easy it is to make a palm tree? Pull out this way. The thing you got to avoid, though, people want to make it look like a, uh, like a, a pinwheel. You want to watch that. You got to be careful of that. It's easy to do. That's why those on the other side, a little bit lighter, gives a little highlight, kind of helps break that up. I'm gonna give another little frond, kind of going to the back side there. Maybe we'll have something coming down here. A little frond. And you want an odd number of fronds too. If it's too even, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do a couple more here. If something coming down this way, another little frond. Maybe one more right down in the front, it's kind of broken down a little bit. Get a little more of that dark color. Maybe one right here, you could be in the back or in the front, it's hard to tell. Another little front. Now we need just a little bit of highlight on here, not much, just a little bit of highlight. So if I go into a, 
into that yellowish kind of color. I know I kind of keep my palette hidden at times. Going to a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow color, some of that liquid white or some of that uh, white medium. Just a lighter green value is what we want because these wouldn't be too lit up. A little bit lighter green value. And most of the light's on the top, so you might see a little bit of, little bit of highlight right in there. Get some more of that yellow color, that lighter green. You might see a little bit of highlight on that guy, a little bit of highlight there. And you wouldn't see much on these bottom ones. You wouldn't see much on these bottom ones. Let me clean my hands up real quick here. Let me clean my hands up. And I'm gonna get a liner brush, my favorite thing to do with a painting. Get a little bit of my dark color, roll it around in there, get some dark color. And I'm gonna sign my name right here to see if it shows up. It doesn't show up in the dark color, so I need a lighter, I need a lighter color. We're gonna go with that uh, tree color we had. Just a little bit lighter color in the sand here. There, yeah, that'll show up. Put my JDW, put that in there. And, that, and that's how you do sweet dreams. Now, you know what I like to do? I like to see this in a, in a canvas or in a frame. So I'm gonna take that off carefully, let that fall down. I'm gonna take it over here to my, to my frame. Okay, as I was saying, I love to see a finished painting into a frame. So we'll drop that guy right down in, in there. It sets down on that ledge. That's how you can set a wet painting right into a frame. Get a couple of these speed clips, clip it in there so we'll hold it in place. And we'll drop it right up here on the easel for you to see. There you go. That's my version of Sweet Dreams. If you ever want to give this a try, I'd love to see what you can do. Send me a copy to uh, jdwayne at therockandrollpainter.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.